Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're continuing your journey as a Claris FileMaker Pro developer, and you're interested in learning more, this particular expert course may be of interest to you. In this video, we'll share an excerpt from our Advanced 2 course, giving you a sneak peek into one of the topics we cover. But first, we wanted to provide you a quick overview of the entire course series. This course is the fourth installment in a series of specialized courses aimed at familiarizing you and instructing you on the usage of FileMaker Pro. In the first installment course called Claris FileMaker Pro Beginner, we started things off by creating our very first app and we learned the basics of layouts, layout objects, and the different view types. We even created our first relationship. In the second installment called Claris FileMaker Pro Intermediate, we continued that journey with the introduction to calculations, scripting, triggers, looping, variables, and even subscripts. The third installment is a course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 1, where we delve into advanced topics including intricate relationships, conditional value lists, scripting, and security. Now this course is titled Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 2, where we take our advanced knowledge even further by building a dashboard which includes filtered lists and a variety of charts and graphs, each one built using a different method. We also cover transactional processing, leveraging the built-in transaction capabilities of FileMaker Pro to ensure safe and efficient scripting and data processing. We also have included sections for building for the wide area network, building for multiple users, and using multiple files. This course also finds opportunities to leverage the consumer-based artificial intelligence as a sidekick companion to your development. So to find out more, join us at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. The name of the course is called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 2. We'd love to have you continue your journey with us here at Productive Computing University. Now, on to the lesson. Insert from URL. This is a script step that takes a moment to learn and a lifetime to master. If there's one script step to rule them all, this would be it. The insert from URL script step is your conduit into the world of connectivity. For this lesson, I've got a dedicated file called Insert from URL Exploration. It's a demo file demonstrating five pieces of functionality under four categories, all using the Insert from URL script step. This file is completely open and available to you, downloadable under this lesson. Let me briefly explain these and then we'll go over each one by one in this lesson. We have the ability to get a quote a random quote along with the author. We have the ability to put in a zip code and get the place name and state based on that zip code. We have the ability to request a random dog picture or a cat picture and get that brought into a container field. And we have the ability to pull a list of countries. Based on that list of countries, we can provide a request to get the flag for that country. So let's explore each one of these one by one to get a handle on the power and flexibility of the insert from URL script step. As we look at this file and go into script workspace, we see several scripts. Some of these scripts are housekeeping scripts for the purposes of supporting the demo file. The ones we're concerned with as far as learning goes in this lesson would be these five scripts. Quotes, zip, cats and dogs, get country codes, and flags. Let's start with quotes. We have a quick comment here that says we're going to get the quote and the author. And this is the script step insert from URL. In setting up this script step, we can take a look at the different things that it asks for. The first thing is whether we select the entire contents. This dictates the behavior on whether to replace the contents that it's already collected entirely and start over, or add to the contents already there based on your target. The target can be one of two things, either a field or a variable. In this case, I'm setting it up to be a variable called JSON. This variable name begins with a single dollar sign, which means the scope of this variable is contained within the script itself. After the script is executed, the variable will be removed. That's the target. Then we can determine the URL. This will specify the URL. And you also have the option to base this on a calculation. So the URL can be dynamically created. You have an option here to automatically encode the URL. 
If your URL included optional parameters and the information contained in those parameters happen to have a space, for example, this option would encode your URL to replace that space with a percent %20, making the entire URL web friendly. Once we go to this URL, we'll parse the JSON. And we populate a global variable called quote for the quote part of it. And we populate author for the author part of it. And we're doing a simple parse of the JSON using this information here, the JSON get element function. Then we refresh the object so that it appears properly on our layout. And then we exit the script. In all these scripts, I put an exit script step at the end, just so that when I'm running it through debugger, I can get through the entire script and see the results of the variables without the script accidentally exiting too quickly before I've had a chance to debug it. So let's for a moment copy this URL to my clipboard and manually go to a browser and paste that URL into the browser. We don't need the quotes, so I'll take those out. And upon entering return, it will return to us a response in the form of JSON. So let me copy this JSON response into a JSON parser. I'll use this one, JSON parser online, and paste it here, and then it parses it like this. So now it makes it a little easier to read. You can see we have three keys. We have a Q key, which is where the quote is, the A key, which is for the author, and the H key for the block quote. This looks to be formatted like HTML. So this is the response we need to parse in order to present it on our layout in a global variable. If I go to layout mode, you'll see here, I have a global variable for the quote part and then one for the author. And I just did a quick carriage return with a little indent so that the author appears just to the bottom and to the right of the quote. So let's run this through debugger. I'll put the debugger on and push the request button. As I step through this, we can see that the insert URL populates the JSON variable. So I'll look at that through data viewer. And here it is right here. Here's my raw JSON response. And you'll see that it begins with this array character, the straight bracket. What I'm really interested in is all this information as the value for the quote key. And I'm also looking for the author here after the A, in this case, Nikola Tesla. So to parse that, I'm using two script steps, one to parse the quote, and I'm using some JSON information here for that, which is to put this bracket zero bracket dot Q. Q is the key, zero is just the index of it. It's beyond the scope of this particular lesson to go over all the nuances of parsing JSON. If you want to get a handle on how to create and parse JSON, I recommend you take a look at the API Fundamentals course, where we spend over an hour going through learning JSON from A to Z and how to work with that here in FileMaker Pro. Then we do the same thing here on step seven, where we parse the author information, and then we refresh the object, quote, which is over here in the layout. If I go to the layout and click on this object, it's been named quote, so it refreshes the variable, so presenting it on the screen. So if I click request now, we should get a brand new quote each time I push the button. So we're using insert from URL to trigger the quote mechanism with this URL and then return the results and put the results here on a layout. Let's go look at another example. This time we're presenting a zip code, so we're actually sending it dynamic information. We use this hard-coded URL along with a dynamically changing zip code pulled from this field. That will return more JSON, and we parse it to indicate the place name and the state. Let's go look at that script. Almost identical when you look at how this is created between the quotes and the zip. It's the same idea, just a different provider. In this case, we're using api.zipopotamus, and here's that dynamically changing zip code. If we take a look at this closer, we can see that our URL is actually a field here at the end. 
where we append the zip code. In return, we get the information here so that we can parse the zip code based on place name and state. Because we're setting fields, all I need to do is commit the records. I don't need to refresh anything, and it will present itself as fields on that layout. Just to bring home the idea that all we're really doing is calling a URL, I'll grab this URL, copy it to my clipboard, and again, go to a new browser. And now I'll change this to a zip code. Let's take out the quotes and format it correctly. I'll choose 92081. And just like we saw in the quote example, it's just returning simple JSON, raw JSON, and then we parse it, collecting the information. Now in each of these tabs, I put the originating website where you can click on this to learn more about a given website and the functionality of these free APIs. I recommend you do that because these APIs can do more than what's presented here. This is just a teaser or a taste of what's possible. Next, we come to cats and dogs. Here we're providing either a cat or a dog, and based on that, we change the URL to either be the cat API or the dog API. The request is formatted like so, as a simple URL, and every time we request a new cat, a new cat picture appears. Same with the dog. And a new dog each and every time. So that script looks like this. Similar to the others, except first we determine if it's a cat or a dog, and we insert the URL based on the cat or dog preference, simply by changing the URL, but everything else is the same. Once we get the results, we parse it, similar to how we did it before. On the previous examples, we were using the zero index by putting a straight bracket zero dot and the key name. In this case, we're using substitute to take the brackets out altogether so we can get at the JSON. So two different ways to parse the same information. I just wanted to provide you a variety to show you that, that there's often more than one way to tackle a situation, and parsing JSON is no different. There's multiple ways you can get to the same result. In this case, I'm using substitute as the function to pull away those straight brackets on either end of the JSON string. Whereas in the other examples, I was leaving the brackets in place, but putting in a bracket holder here, I could have just as easily done this. That would work too. In fact, I'll change it just to make it consistent with the quotes that we have. So places zero dot place. And then for the quotes, we have the same thing. Bracket zero bracket dot key name. In this case, Q or A. Q for quote, A for author. So that's cats and dogs. Next, we talk about flags. So flags, I've got it broken into two scripts, one to pull the country list from the API provider, and another one to determine the country and even the width, which will dynamically change your URL. And based on these conditions, it'll pull in the appropriate flag at the appropriate size. So first, the pull country list. It's important to get an accurate list of countries. If you don't select the country or you misspell the country, then you won't be able to bring in the flag. So I thought it would be best to pull the country list dynamically. So let me show you how we're doing that. That you'll find over here under this script. It's a little more elaborate because there are multiple records and we need to create a loop in order to loop through the records and collect a list. And because multiple records are involved, I first determine if there's a window open with the name that's designated for this routine. If so, it'll close it. Then after it does that, it'll create a brand new window called country codes. This just gives us a, an area to work with. Then we do the insert from URL, which is hard coded to pull in all the countries. If I were to manually take this and copy that URL and put it in a browser like we've been doing, for our other examples, you'll see that it's really just a list of countries and their country code. And then we're parsing that. This whole thing from here to here is doing the parsing. First, we determine if this is valid JSON by calling the function get element type. Then we truncate the table so that it removes all records that were previously there for the country codes. Then we populate one record for every country. 
Before we do that, though, we need to get the total list of countries. This tells us how many times to loop. And we create a loop, and we do a standard loop incrementer. Then we create a new record for every country, and then we parse the country. One for the code, one for the country, and then we repeat, repeat, repeat until the total captured up here equals the incrementer. Once that's done, it closes the work window. It leaves us with a dialog indicating the total number of countries created and exits the script. So if we run that, it pulls the countries, then it truncates the table, and then record by record, it parses the country information and puts it as a new record here in FileMaker Pro. All right. So that's the country codes. That creates a value list that allows us to pick a country. So if I want to get the flag for the United Kingdom, based on these predefined sizes, I can do that. So a small UK flag versus a large UK flag. This is just going into a container field. So the flag script is probably the simplest script of all. And this is the URL to construct that. This is the fixed part of the URL. And then we tell it to choose a flag with, and then the country code. And then we specify .jpg as the format that we want returned. So it's one script step, very easy to understand. And the big difference here is we're not having to parse any JSON formatted text. We go right for the container because we're receiving a JPEG download. So insert from URL can return your results in a container or a text field. Most of the time it's text, but sometimes it's binary data, like in this case, a picture of a flag. There's one important thing here that we brushed over very quickly, and that is this option here to specify the curl options. This curl options is an open calculation which is where you will put the specifics of your request. And this is also where you will format your request in working with a sophisticated API. That goes beyond the scope of this course to learn how to do all of that. It requires its own dedicated course, which we have in the form of API fundamentals for FileMaker developers here at Productive Computing University. So that concludes this lesson. I encourage you to download this file experiment with these options and maybe even tweak the options after you take a closer look at each one of these APIs in detail. You can see that these are entire services dedicated for this given functionality and there's a lot you can do, including getting your own API key and you can incorporate that. If you want to take all of these APIs to another level, many of them, if not all of them, offer a paid program depending on features and functionalities you're looking for. But I picked all these APIs because they are very simple. None of them require an API key, and they are all free to get started. So I hope you enjoy this file. It's a great way to learn Insert from URL by getting a lot of results quickly without a lot of heavy-duty programming. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson extract from the course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced Part 2. To find out more, go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com, where you can enroll in this course, along with many others, training you on the Claris platform. If you are interested in taking multiple courses, it might make sense to invest in the Productive Computing University bundle package, which is one yearly price to gain access to the entire university library. As always, thanks for joining us on this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.